Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spotlight. Today, I'm going to talk about a fiber box that I just discovered and I'm really excited about it. In my glass is a cocktail that I am going to name where the wild things are. And I picked this cocktail because out on one of my walks I discovered some absolutely gorgeous blackberries. I had fresh basil growing in my garden so I muddled that together with a little bit of lemon honey threw in my favorite libation gin and topped it with some club soda. Once again, this is always a cocktail that you can make without the gin and it tastes just as amazing with or without the libation. And I thought where the wild things are would be the perfect compliment to talk about this new fiber box that I discovered. This is from Wild Wool Farm. And the first thing that I noticed when I got this box is how amazing the box itself is. I know that seems kind of silly, but there's so much happening with this box that when you open it, it's a little bit like Christmas. There is a QR code, there's information on the side. My favorite is the saying as you get ready to open the box, behind every spinner is a flock of naked sheep. They got our, wait for it, back. I know that's really bad, but it's kind of adorable. So I'm already excited, even before I open this box. And I love fiber boxes anyway because they're, there's so much potential, completely untapped potential. So a little bit about these boxes and Wild Wool Farm. One, the first thing that I noticed as I was out hunting for these, the website is incredibly easy to navigate. And I'm gonna put all of that information down in the description. These boxes are huge in that there's 10 ounces of fiber in here. Now I had two choices. I had the bat box to choose from or the Rolag box. And the website is amazing anyway. There are themed boxes. I just picked up another one. I can't wait to get it. I'll be talking about that when it comes because I'm really excited about that one as well. These are, for one, the box is custom printed. The blends are custom blends. So you're not going to get the same thing twice. And at 10 ounces, it's roughly about $6 per ounce. The boxes are $58 plus shipping, $58.99 plus shipping. So that might seem a little steep up front, but then when you break it down and think about it and wait until you see how much fiber 10 ounces in, it, it, it is a ton of fiber. Oh, the other thing I noticed when I went to the website, and I don't know if it's there all the time, but when I found this one, there was also a promo code. So this is a website that you might wanna go back to because the promo code was a really nice promo code. So when I opened it, the first thing, there is a card and some tea. And the vanilla chai just, it wasn't wild enough. I wanted something a little bit crazier as I got in and started digging with this. The stitch marker I love because it says I love my cat, which is brilliant. Now, getting into the bat box. In here, there is Merino, Coriadale, Lincoln, Icelandic, and milk fiber. So there's quite a bit of blends, and this is a perfect opportunity for me to also grab my field guide to fleece and learn about how these breeds work together. This box would be a perfect gift for someone that is just getting started with fiber arts. And the reason for that is with so much fiber, there is a lot of exploration that you can do with this. This would be great for somebody who is wanting to jump into the fiber arts world, for somebody who is right on the edge of the rabbit hole and wants to start either felting or spinning this is a great way to get started. So I'm gonna take just a second and review. I'm not gonna bore you with me looking up all of these different breeds. So I'll be back in just a second to talk a little bit more specifically about these five fibers. I mean, just one second. Mm. So good. 
I quickly went through the field guide to fleas and I noted a few things. One, the micron count is pretty similar. The, the micron range is very similar across all of these breeds. Now, very quickly, micron is nothing more than the dynamiter. So basically what micron is, it is, the easiest way to think about micron is that the smaller the number, the finer the wool. The larger the number, the coarser the wool. And for this, my initial notes on this, this is a coarse blend, but Lincoln, I'm familiar with because Lincoln is on the Shave em to Save em from the Livestock Conservancy. So I've worked quite a bit with Lincoln. It's an incredibly strong fiber. So I feel like what I have here, if I'm going to spin all of this, these would make amazing socks. So for the sock person, the sock knitter, this would be brilliant. So let's see just how much 10 ounces of fiber actually is. Holy cow. It's like it's like a sheep. Look at the size of this. Oh. And it smells so fresh and clean. It's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to open this up as well. I am so much potential right now. Okay. So looking at, oh, look at the milk fiber. Oh, this is perfect. Milk fiber is this stuff right here. Milk fiber is a lot like bamboo, uh, but a little bit, it has a little bit more of a tooth to it. I actually prefer spinning with milk fiber more than bamboo. It's uh, plant-based and it reminds me a lot of Tussa silk as well, but it is easier to spin with. So I'm just going to move this around. Okay. So now what does one do with all of this potential? Give me just a second and I'll come back with some ideas. One of the things that I have challenged myself with this year is taking good notes. And you can find the note sheet that I use over on my website. And the spinning attributes and the fiber prep and all of the stuff that I have down here, this is really kind of a good guide because there are so many things that I can do with this bat. And this is one of the reasons why I picked the fiber bat instead of the Rolag. Once you have Rolags, I feel like your only option is to spin them. Whereas with this bat, I can make Rolags. So the first thing on my list is dizzed. And so let's talk a little bit about that. So usually when you dizz, you dizz off of a drum carter or off of the combs or off of a hackle, but you don't have to. With something this large, I need to start breaking it down into smaller or more manageable pieces to spin with. So a dizz is nothing more than a tool that has holes in it. And there are all different holes. I'm going to go with one of the bigger holes because I know that this is a blend of different fibers. And so I'm just going to start on one end. And I believe the gray is, and I'm, I think the gray is probably the Icelandic. which has a very long staple length. So I'm just gonna pull it through like so. And then the great thing with a diz is as I pull the fiber through, I'm doing a little pre-drafting. And pre-drafting for a new spinner is really important because it makes getting the twist into the fiber so much easier. Here we go, and I'm gonna just move across. There you can see, I'm just moving across. 
across the path. Oh, I believe I have found some of the Lincoln. As I'm doing this, it gives me an opportunity to get a sense of the staple length that I'm going to be working with, which is pretty long. And that's going to help me identify the tool that I'm going to want to use. So this has a long staple length. Now I could just keep going back and forth, but I'm going to stop and pull that out. So that's one pass. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, look at all those colors. So one pass across the width of this bat, and the colors have started to blend a little bit. That is absolutely beautiful. And this will be a little bit easier to spin than as well. So that's one option. The other option is I can start pulling off pieces and start spinning with it. But I'm going to get out my blending board. So give me just a second and I'm going to do a little bit of blending. One of the things that I do like about this, there's not a lot of milk fiber. Milk fiber is not going to take dye the same way, the way that I dye. I usually dye with Kool-Aid, and I know Kool-Aid will probably not adhere to the milk fiber. So if I do do some dyeing with this, those milk fibers would stay white, which could be kind of interesting. I might do a little bit of dyeing with this as well. There's like so much potential. So, dizzed. The next thing I can do is make smaller, if you've got a blending board, you can make the full size Rolex. I like making faux logs or the smaller Rolex just using my hand cards. Hand cards are so versatile and so easy to come by. And again, it's just blending the fiber and making it a little bit more manageable to spin with. So I am going to very quickly charge. Now, because there is merino in here, I'm gonna need to be careful that I don't create naps. Merino can get neppy, so I am going to be gentle in my blending. very gentle in my blending. That's all I'm going to do because I don't want Okay, so from a bat, faux log, little rolag there. Oh, to do that. There's so much fiber left. And looking at it, I'm not. Gonna, I wouldn't comb it again. Combing would be blending it as well. Um, just breaking off pieces like so. 
to spin. But as I look at this with all of these different blends on here, I'm, I think for me, I'm going to go through and either create Rolex or pull it, pull it through the Diz. There's a little bit too much variety in here. And it's, it's not that it's, there's no, it's not inconsistent, but I want there to be more of a blend of the different fibers because I think that's going to give me a stronger and it's going to give me a more consistent yarn. So now the other thing that I could do this, so here's the Merino. This would be really fun. Oh, here's another suggestion for it as well. This would be so much fun for like a Girl Scout troop or a guild where you've got all of these different, it could be a game, identify the fibers. This is 100% Merino. I, I can just, I, I, that's Merino. And this feels like it is the Icelandic. And the creamier, I would say this is probably, oh, and it has pink. So this is going to be the Lincoln. Coriadale, now the Coriadale, that one, mmm. I don't know about that one. I might have to do some digging on that one. Coriadale usually has a little bit shorter staple length. So, ooh, that could be, ooh, that could be Coriadale. Mmm, with the Merino. See, you could have so much fun trying to identify the different fibers. This is Speaking of Girl Scouts, or children in general, um, if they're not spinning or not felting, because there's so much, I don't know that I would dr turn all of this into dryer balls, but creating dryer balls is a fun way to learn about how fibers work together. And so with this, I just took off a tiny bit, and dryer ball construction it's just you're folding it back in on itself. There are really no rules to making fiber or making dryer balls or felt balls. It could be fun for ornaments. So for this, I am just taking, and you would continue building until you got the ball that you wanted. And I'm just gonna do a quick, just to see how well these fibers hold together just with there's a little bit of natural, I can feel a little bit of lanolin in here, which is nice. I like that. It's soft. It's not over-processed, which I love. Um, sometimes you can get fiber that is almost dry, which is not fun to spin. So this, oh yeah, it holds together really well. You can take and start felting this. Wow. Wow. That holds together really well. So dryer ball, you're building it in on itself, and then you are going to put it into a uh, stocking, a uh, nylon, a pair of nylons, and knot it and put it through the wash, and you'll come out with dryer balls. So, and that is really good. This fiber sticks together wonderfully well. You could make um, ornaments with it. So just a very quick recap. This is a all-natural, Fiber Arts, this is an all-natural fiber box, comes in two designs, either the bat, which they're huge, 10-ounce bats, or Rolex. It is Wild Wool Farm, and for me, I feel like this would be the perfect entry level type of thing for a new spinner. This would make such an amazing gift for someone if you're gifting them with a drop spindle or a support spindle, or if you just want to expose them to a variety of different fibers. If you're starting to think about that Christmas shopping early, I absolutely think this would be something that would be incredibly fun to open on Christmas day. And without even thinking about it, where the wild things are, it does have kind of a holiday hue to it. This would be a perfect way to spend a holiday morning. <laughs> I put all of the details down in the description. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy spinning.